Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know, I'm still Angie. This is still 4F Beauty. That fan is on because it's so damn hot. And my fringe is really tickling my eyebrows right now. Hopefully you're watching me in black and white. You know, like, like the start of Wizard of Oz. Panic not. Glorious Technicolor is on the way. I don't even need to drop a house on a witch and steal her shoes in order to achieve that fact. Yes, the heat's got to me. I've only filmed one film. I need to film at least one more. And the heat's got to me already. Right. You will have seen from the thumbnail the title, and if you've read any of it, the description. Don't worry, I don't read the description until afterwards either. It's Freaking Bats. This was your choice. Overwhelmingly your choice of the first palette you wanted to see me do a look with. So, if you want to find out exactly which shades I used, how well this palette did or did not behave, and most importantly, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, then my darlings, you, you have the best seat in the house. He's here to tell you to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and get comfy. Because here it comes. Oh, right. Hey, my lovelies. I am back from yet another extended non planned sabbatical. This eye is streaming like mad because of hay fever, but if I don't have that fan on, any makeup I apply uh, will not remain. Um, I put a list up recently uh, and I popped a film, a short film, up on my channel listing some of the newer to me palettes that I've got that I've not played with yet. Um, and asked which ones you would want to see first. Now the overwhelming winner in that is this one from Shroud, X Butte Bean. It's freaking bats. Now I picked this up uh, from a seller on Depop and when it arrived, the Royal Mail had managed to smash these two. Thankfully, I was able to repress them so, fingers crossed they still perform okay. They're, they're both shimmers, so normally shimmers will repress fine. Um, this is still a teaching channel, even though I'm currently melting. Um, and by virtue of that, obviously, I zoom in very close to just my eyes, so you can absolutely see what's going on regardless of how good or bad your eyesight is and how large or small your screen is. Uh, it does mean that when I'm looking down to clean the brush or add more pigment you get a lovely shot of my hairline but I figure that's a small price to pay for actually being able to see what's happening on my eyes. Um, I'm going to insert a clip just now where I talk you through the difference between hooded and deep set eyes because although the way that a shadow wears off of them is very similar to get the most longevity and the best initial look application needs to be slightly different and I see a lot of people with deep set eyes like myself mistakenly believe or mistakenly being told that they have hooded lids so once your clip has finished playing I will be back to apply some of these coloured pigments to my eyelids. And let's hope and pray this eye behaves itself. See you in a minute. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble 
primer in blank page cotton I do have a discount code for this it is not affiliated I don't earn money from it but if you use my code you save I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them the reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour you don't have that trade-off with this you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour now she does six different shades of this at the moment white is the lightest the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black then there are three different skin tone shades as well so you should be able to find one that will work for you um, I apply this with a flat brush just a very light layer and then I buff it over mm -hmm with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds if you have hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using just sit back relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, okay I am back. I'm going to use an e.l.f. blending eye brush to start with and uh, I'm going to be doing my usual um, Viennese waltz blend. Brain's gone, it's been so long since I've filmed I can't even remember what I'm talking about which is basically natural turns towards the nose, a flicker when we get there and reverse turns to come back again. Now the reason I do this over the windscreen wiper, although I do sometimes use that as well, 
is that I'm 47 years old, I've lost over 200 pounds, the skin on my eyelids moves. So, if I just do this, the skin can fold over on itself and cause those telltale white stripes. By doing the Viennese Waltz Blend, it's slightly um, less traumatic for your eyes. And by gently moving the skin one way than the other, it should prevent those stripes. Okay, I'm going to start off with Trapper. Now I've never used Shroud Cosmetics before. There's quite a bit of kick up in the pan there. And I dip very, very gently, but as you can see there's a fair amount of kick up there. Which is not a problem, because uh, I'll just pick that back up to do the other eye with. Right, I'm going to start roughly in the middle here. And bring that down towards the nose. A little bit of a flecker when we get here. And then reverse to come back again. Pick up a bit of that excess pigment. I don't know whether it's because I'm a bit sweaty or whether it's because I didn't clean this brush as well as I thought I had. But this does seem to be going on a little bit darker than it looks in the pan. And I think it's just when my skin's hot. It's still blending really nicely though, and really easily. With negligible fallout, that's nice to see. Um, the reason I do each eye, rather than doing one eye and then coming back to do the other one, is because um, with fibro, I can get random swelling on my eyelids. Um, and if you if you have that, sometimes you have to use different shapes on both eyes in order to get them to actually look the same. Um, that being the case, you're not going to be able to work out which shadow it is that you need to change if... I should have got a fresh wash cloth. If you've got to the end of doing one eye and you start doing the other one, you're like, hmm, something about this doesn't look right. You're not going to really be able to work out which of the shades it is that you need to adjust to get them to match if you've already blended everything together. Right. Having cleaned my brush on a clean washcloth, I used to use colour switches, but they're so harsh on your brushes, especially your natural haired ones, oh my goodness. Um, I'm going to Spooky. Again, barely touching into the pan. And there's a lot of kick up. And I'm just going to Pop this onto the outer part and blend it onto that mustardy yellow or grungy olivey yellow mustardy baby nappy poop colour. You can see what I mean about my skin moving now. Just blend that back out. Purples are one of the most difficult colours to create. 
but this is building quite nicely, blending quite easily into that first colour we laid down. Hmm. Like that. As you can see, I like to leave a bit of a gap between the top of the shadow and my brow. If you don't have as much real estate of lid that I've got, then you know, by all means, take yours right up to the brow so that you can still get all the colours in. Um, or like I said in the clip, use a slightly smaller brush. Um, but the reason I like to leave that bit of a gap there is so that when I put um, the highlight under the edge of the brow, it really helps just to lift that outer edge. Because apparently folks, like boobs and everything else, our brows sag as we get older. Isn't that wonderful? Again, just blending those two colours together. Get a smaller blending brush. Let's try this one. This one comes up more to a point. It's not quite a pencil brush, as you can see. It's sort of the next stage out from a pencil brush. And I'm going to dip into Adams, which is the beautiful vibrant green. Again, a lot of kick up, so be very, very gentle with yours when you use it. And I'm going to start off just popping that a little bit of fallout from this one I've noticed. But that could be because of the, the shape of brush that I'm using. Deepen up this outer corner here, pull a little bit onto the edge of the mobile lid, and then I'm going to run this along where just slightly above my natural crease, so it's still just slightly visible and my eyes open. I'm not going to take it all the way across. Just to about there, I think. And then just and flip the ends up like I like I usually do. Make sure it's blended. Okay. So far, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Now, this is the eye that has been playing me up. So, it remains to be seen. If this side does go a bit blurpy, we know it's not the actual palette, it's my eye weeping causing the issue. But it's been so long since I filmed, and the 
noisy neighbours are actually being reasonably quiet today. And the neighbours that were having their drive done three houses down, which meant jackhammering the old drive up. I think they've got to the stage where they're now laying the new pavers, block pavers. So that's got to a more quiet stage. Yes, it's ridiculously hot. But that's what fans are for. This is how I straighten the edges up. I just use a pad with my cellar water on it. Just to clear any fallout and give me a nice sharp edge, like so. Yes, I could use tape, but if the tape is sticky enough to stop the um, powder from going underneath it, then it's sticky enough that it's going to pull your eye around when you come back to it. So, likewise, well, you could use powder. Yes, if I wanted to look 149. Trust me, once you're past 30, the only baking you should do involves cupcakes. Right. I'm going to pause you, my darlings, while I go and pop some foundation and base products on and do my brows and whatnot. And I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Uh, obviously, I've now got to wait a while for I can chat to you again. For you it's going to be instant. So I will see you right now. Hey my lovely ones, I am back. Right, okay. I'm going to do the shimmer part on my lid because I just totally forgot to do that. Told you it's been a while since I filmed. Um, as usual I'm going to use a nice flat brush to pick the pigment up. And then I'm just going to squirt it with, well, this is a Makeup Obsession spray. Um, you can use any liquid that you want really. Um, you can use a priming spray, a setting spray, um, a moisturising spray like your MAC or your Mary or Badescu. Um, finishing spray. You can even just save a bottle and just fill it with fresh tap water each time. Um, doesn't really matter, just so long as you don't put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. We all know this. Right. I am going to go into the shade called a Handbook. Which is a lovely sort of yellowy, greeny, grungy sort of shade. Oops. Like that. Now, because I've sprayed it, this ferrule is now wet. So tuck that into your knuckles and spin. Because the last thing we want is moisture getting down and loosening the glue that holds those into place. Okay. Now, Starting on the inside corner here, and just bringing that up and out to roughly just past where the green stops, the deeper green. Dry the brush, go back in, pick up some more. And do 
the other side. Now with this side, uh, I've got super deep creasing just here as you can see. That was caused by damage done when I was four or five years old at the ophthalmic hospital. So unfortunately I do have to break my own rule about not stretching out my lid. However, I'm going to show you how I do it in such a way that I cause as little additional damage as possible. So, I'm going to straighten the lid out just far enough to stretch the lid. I'm not pulling it out to my ear roll. And then I'm going to apply the shimmer as quickly and efficiently as I can. Making sure it's properly blended onto the lid not building up and then gently pushing that back like that. Um, if I don't do that what happens is the pigment collects in the deep creases rather than um, melding onto the lid and then as it dries during the day it ends up coming down, it gets in my eyes, it just looks a mess and it's horrible basically. Right. I'm going to try one of these shades that I had to repress now. I'm going to zero, which is a really beautiful, soft lilac. Lavender's a more pink based. Right, and then I'm going to pop this onto the remaining part of the lid, mobile lid that is, it doesn't yet have any pigment on it. And then just gently blending where the two colours meet and just blending the edge there. little bit of fallout that I had to be careful with because obviously I've now done my face. I know, I'm a donut. This is the problem, when you haven't filmed for a while, you kind of... And not only have I not filmed, I've not even put makeup on. I've just been so... mentally down, physically down. I just couldn't face putting makeup on which is so not like me. As anyone who knows me can tell. So same thing this side. Apply it, blend it, lovely. Actually I really like that. Mm, I like that a lot. Right, I'm going to grab one of my chunky, this is my Spectrum A13 brush. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit of Spooky, which is the colour that I used here and here. I'm just going to really lightly run that along the lower lash line. Normally I would pick up on this deeper green but I felt like doing something a little bit different today. Plus if this eye continues to water this purple will be easier to clear up than the green would be. There's method to my madness, folks. There's method. Somewhere. I'm just going to go into the shade called Sam. I'm going to try that on my inner corner. Ooh. Yes, that's quite pretty as an inner corner. I've not wet it, obviously.
That's super pretty. Right. I'm going to go into, as that was a butte bean, I thought I'd go into the Samantha March highlighter from Ofra, Start Inspired, which is a mixture of Pillow Talk and Star Island. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit of Star Island to go up under my brow here. If you don't want to use a shimmer, you can just use a shade a little bit lighter than your skin tone in a matte colour to do this. But I love colour, I love sparkling, I love any, I think I was a mad pine in a previous life, it's anything shiny and I'm like, ooh. Right, my lovely ones, I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to chuck some highlighter on my cheeks, um, bung some mascara on, choose a lippy, do something with the hair, not sure what yet, and I'll be back with my finished look. So please don't go anywhere. Hey lovelies, I am back. Okay, so this is my finished look using It's Freaking Bats. Uh, I tried a new mascara today. It's a new one from e.l.f. Lash It Loud Volumizing Mascara. Uh, Jessica Braun was saying that that's a fantastic one, so I thought I'd give it a go. I wouldn't say it's volumizing, but it's okay. The Lippy is one of my Charlotte Tilbury ones that my lovely friend Hedda sent me. This is a very Victoria, and I do believe this is actually my favourite lipstick shade on me ever. So, there we go. What do we think? Uh, in terms of the palette, the mattes blended very well, although there's an awful amount of kick up in pan. So you need to be very, very gentle when you're using it, otherwise you're going to burn through those mattes in no time at all. Um, I made a point of using two different shimmers, one that I'd had to repress, one that I hadn't. Thankfully they both seem to be performing in exactly the same way, so uh, if the postman decides to use yours for kicking practice and they end up smashed as well, um, at least I know that if you have to repress the shimmers that it's not going to affect the performance of those shades at least in terms of application and initial impact obviously I don't know how well they're going to wear through the day that's something I can only tell in about eight hours time assuming I've still got any makeup on in eight hours time because it's going to get up to 28 but because there's uh, no breeze it's going to feel like 33 and our homes over here do not have aircon and they are designed to keep heat in, not repel it. Suffice to say, and once I've finished filming, I'm going to be wearing as little as possible, sitting in front of a fan and drinking as much in terms of water that I can. Yes. Right. Um, do I think this is worth it? From what I've used so far, yes, I am super happy that this is now part of my collection and I can assure you it's going to be going nowhere fast. So, what do you think? Do you have this palette? Do you like it as much as I do? Um, were you waiting to see my comments on it before you bought it? Apparently it is now coming up for a restock so if you want to well, at least when I'm filming this it's coming up for a restock um, I think they said they're going to keep stocking it as long as there's a demand for it so you know keep keep going basically uh, if you want it make sure the brand knows that you want it I really do like it if you've noticed lots of scratches by the way um, GP has put me on to stronger 
antibiotics to try and shift my cellulitis. Uh, and then she's put me on two different types of antibiotics at the same time. Uh, the combination of which, one of them is exacerbating my IBS to the extent that not so much as the bottom fell out of my world, but the world fell out of my bottom every time I go to the toilet. Mm, TMI, I'm sure, but suffice to say, that's why I couldn't sit on this hard stool and do makeup for quite some time. Um, and the other lot of antibiotics, one of the side effects that I'm getting with this heat is I'm getting uh, itchy. So I'm clawing myself to pieces at night, as you can probably see from my arm there. It's all scratched up to buggery. Uh, but yeah, if you've seen any scratches, it's it's, uh, it's nothing exciting. It's just side effects from meds. <sighs> Admittedly, I haven't taken any antibiotics for the last two days because it's just been so hot the heat affects my IBS as well so there, there wouldn't be enough time between me taking the antibiotics and me expelling them for them to actually do any good so uh, hopefully the weather's going to cool down in a couple of days and I can restart the course again I know it's not ideal but it's no point taking them if they're only going to be in my system for 20 minutes you know it's not long enough Anyway, enough of my problems. Do you have this palette? Do you like this palette? Do you like this eye look that I've done? Is it a bit too bright for you? Um, are there any other looks you'd like to see me do with this palette? Let me know. Um, I have got a lot of other palettes that I still need to film with. So if you do request a look, um, it may end up being um, just an Instagram look initially, but if I have got time to film one for you, I will. Right, I hope you've enjoyed this film. Uh, if you have, it would be awesome if you could hit that thumbs up for me. Pop a little comment down there for me just to help the algorithm, because obviously my algorithm is completely shot to pieces right now, where I've not uploaded for ages. Yay me! Uh, if you're new here, hi, hello, welcome, lovely to see you. Uh, I'm not quite sure how you tripped over me, but now you're here, it's lovely to have you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this film, it's, it's, it's kind of the sort of thing you normally get from me. I wish on about all kinds of everything, whilst hopefully imparting some useful tips and tricks on applying makeup to skin that is not necessarily perfectly taut and wrinkle free and stuff like that. If you have enjoyed this it would be awesome if you'd like to join the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube and it's super easy to do. You hit that red subscribe button down there, then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope that you do will actually send you any. Uh, if you are a regular viewer, please double check that A, you're still subscribed and B, that your notifications are still set to what you want them to be. Uh, I've had a lot of people saying they've been unsubscribed even before I had my little health hiatus. Uh, if you are new here, or even if you're not, I've got an awful lot of other films you can be watching. All kinds of everything. Remind me of you. Um, it's the heat. I'm blaming the heat. But yeah, I've, I've got all kinds of things. I've got palette reviews, tutorials, um, collabs, challenges, tag films. I even read my favourite poem in one of them. So, basically, as I've said from what feels like time immemorial, Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, get comfy, pick a playlist and chill out with a coffee and a custard cream or whatever your biscuit or cookie of choice is. Alright my lovely ones, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fine.
and I will see you next time. Bye for now.